Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to the second session of Midnight Moments. Thanks for joining me again uh, at this, this first day of fasting. Inshallah, I hope everybody's fast was a good one this first day of Ramadan. For those of you who have completed, some of you may just be coming to the end of this sweet first day. And uh, welcome, welcome back. So I hope you're enjoying this, this Ramadan live program that CMC is putting forth. I'm really excited about it. These, uh, it's an incredible, incredible lineup of scholars. Uh, I'm really looking forward to learning, learning a lot throughout this month. And I'm honored to be a part of this, this program. Um, as a psychologist, my background is in, in Islamic psychology. And so I'm really honored to be to be included in this, to be seen as something important that we're working on ourselves throughout this process. Um, so it's, it's important that we put into context our dean with personal improvement, personal development. And this is something that I love about Cambridge Muslim College is that the programs are not just about studying books. It's not just about understanding Islam as this static, thing, but it's something that is applicable and applicable in these contemporary times. And so it's important that we are we come into relationship with Islam in this way, so that it's this, this living thing that is applied to our lives. We are all works in progress. We're all in development. And we are constantly changing states. So the state that we're all trying to achieve and to move towards and to develop into is a state of Islam. So rather than it being just a religion that we come to to learn and we have this uh, distant relationship, really understanding how this knowledge can impress upon our process, our process of development. And so today we're going to be talking about presence, hudur in the Arabic, and this concept of presence and how important it is in related to our development. Um, being present is, is how we really can truly come into submission. So how we can be in, in Islam, in a state of Islam, is by being present with Allah's reality, being present to be able to submit to what is in this moment. Allah's reality exists in the here and now, right? So this notion that we have of the past and the future is something that we occupy ourselves with because of our orientation to our experience and time but in Allah's reality, it exists in the here and now, right? And we often live everywhere else but the here and now. We are uh, constantly thinking about something in the past that we are regretful of and causing anxiety and worried about what's going to happen in the future and in a state of fear and living in these different places uh, doesn't allow us to be present for what is what is here with us and what Allah is unfolding in each moment. So we often miss what is there, and it's it's impossible really to be in a state of Islam, the state of your being being in submission, if you're not fully present in the moment with Allah. So we can practice to strive to be present with Allah's reality. And really this is a coming back to our true nature. Our true nature, our fitra, as human beings, as souls, was to be in a state of witnessing Allah, being present with Allah's reality and knowing the tawheed, knowing that Allah is one and that we are servants. If you go back to when the, all of the souls were created before our 
existence in this life, Allah said, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And all of us, you and I, replied, Bella, shahidna. So we witness this, this term shahidna oftentimes is translated as testify. But I think this notion of testify is somewhat passive and somewhat cognitive because you can testify as often uh, you believe something or, or not. Whereas witnessing is more of an experiencing what is, right? So we said, shahidna, we witness, we, we, we see and experience the reality of Allah. Not just we believe, not just we cognitively um, uh, align ourselves with an understanding, but an actual witnessing of what is real. And so this is the true nature of our soul with Allah. And this state of Islam is this place of being present with Tawheed. And this is our soul's true nature. This is what is inside of us all of the time. It's just covered over. And when we are distracted with the dunya, when we're distracted with our lives, when we're distracted with our, our notion of self, our notion of self and our notion of who we are that's not connected to this fitra soul, then we become disconnected from this witnessing that is available to us in every moment. Essentially, in each moment, we can be present with that reality of Tawheed. And so our ability to be present with Allah is really based on our state. Right, so we cannot necessarily be present fully with Allah to to His full uh, reality, because he's, Allah's reality is so much larger than than our ability to perceive it. But what we can be fully present with, with work, is to be present to ourselves, or present with ourselves, which opens the door to this presence with Allah, and opens the door to this original state of witnessing and so it's this experience this this coming into being coming into a place of being present with what is and experiencing what is there and and really the first gateway to experiencing allah's reality as it is unfolded is experiencing what is in ourselves um, we come to be present with ourselves and come to understand and experience what we're holding in our hearts. We often don't do this. We often are focused externally. We're focused on uh, understanding from up here. We're connected to logic and reason more than we're connected to an experience of, uh, of of using our heart to understand. And we'll talk more about this in other sessions, this notion of the, of the ability of the qalb to reason, to understand. And this is where the seat of consciousness is. And so the first step in, in polishing our hearts, because our work really is uncovering these, this crust on our hearts so that we can be able to come back to this original witnessing. But first we have to be present with what is in our hearts. And present even sometimes with our hearts at all. I think we, we get cut off from this, um, this experience or even this knowledge or reality that this is the center of our being. We often live up here with this cognitive um, orientation to making sense of our experience and who we are. And we, we need to learn really how to be present in the heart. And so it's like a, uh, it's a dropping into our being uh, and, and moving from here to here as our center. And so even if we can't witness Allah, because this is a big tall order, you can witness your heart, you can witness 
this aspect of yourself, which for many people, for all of us to a degree can be intimidating because when we come to see what is inside of us or come to be with what's there, we may, we may, be, we may not want to be with what's there. It may be scary um, and it may be too much. I, I know that yesterday in our talk, one of the comments people said, yes, being still, but it's, it's, I feel alone there. There's this loneliness in the stillness and this is a reality. Um, and there's something that we have to come to terms with that loneliness, loneliness. And really we have to come to terms with whatever is present in our hearts. And this is the idea is, is, is coming into this place of presence to be with what is, because what is there is what Allah has uh, manifested, what Allah has created. And so therefore there's something there for you to surrender to. And why, when we're in these state, this states of, of, of cultivating presence, we're not on our own, we're not alone. And so we're not only completely relying on what we come up with and trying to deal with what comes up there. This is why we bring in dhikr of Allah. We remember Allah when we're in these states of presence to uh, receive this, this mercy and to know that Allah is the one that in, is going to change our hearts. Our job is to open them and to be in a state of surrender so that we can be moved and we can grow and we could develop. So it's this understanding of dhikr, the remembrance of Allah in the heart to penetrate our hearts, right? So it's like this washing, we're bringing this remembrance of Allah to be with whatever is difficult in our heart, whatever is blocking us from being open, we can ask Allah to help us with that. And the remembrance of Allah, so surely in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest, hearts it says. And, and often our, our relationship to the dhikr is, is a cognitive phrase. We say this thing to remind us uh, mentally, which is good because we need your mental, we, we spend a lot of time in this mental space. And so it needs to engage us in remembering, but then we really need to be present with bringing that remembrance of a lot into our hearts so that our hearts find rest. So it's moving from this cognitive remembrance to remembrance, thicker of the heart. And presence, cultivating presence, is really useful for this purpose. So that we can have this deeper relationship to uh, bringing the remembrance of Allah into our hearts and becoming familiar with this place of stillness allows for Allah to unfold what there is for you to unfold in your, in your growth and development. And when we bring ourselves into this place of presence, we're allowing access to our kalb, the center, center of our being. And in this center is where we find connection to our Lord. And from this place, of presence here, uh, more is possible. And I say that in, in every fashion of the understanding of this, the, the more is possible. There's more connection with Allah, more connection with yourself, more entering into the state of Islam. And this is where we can really truly become who we're meant to be as servants of Allah. And in this state of submission and this state of witnessing Tawheed. And thus experiencing, experiencing a state of Islam. This true state of Islam rather than having this distant relationship to it as a thing, but really orienting ourselves to it as an experience. Islam as a state. So this is the work. We have a lot of work cut out for us in this path of trying to be in a state of Islam is a, is a, is a tall order. Uh, so this is where we will focus our, our work together. I wanted to set the stage for this idea of uh, cultivating this sense of presence 
and why presence is important, why we talk about this as a foundational element to not only our growth, but to really uh, deepening our, our state of Islam. And so going forward, uh, starting next week on Monday night, we will be introducing some, some mechanisms, some techniques and tools for cultivating more presence. So I hope you join me and we continue this journey together. Again, I invite you to uh, share, your, share your comments uh, and so we can be responsive. I think maybe starting next week, I'll be able to interact a little bit more um, with what people are putting in the comments and we can make this a supportive community as we try to deepen our experience, our spiritual experience of this holy month of Ramadan. Thank you so much for joining me again, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful weekend, and enjoy your these first sweet days of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.